What is going on beautiful people welcome back it's your boy blue and this is a cold and dark quick start guide for the challenger 650 by hot start no checklist needed at all let's go all right first we will remove the hud by clicking here in the push position and then we'll move up and hit the battery master on the top left down to on you'll hear it power up you don't want to stay on the battery power for too long so we'll go over to the apu hit click on power fuel and then start stop you'll hear that firing up it'll say start in just a second and once it's finishing spooling up it'll say avail while we're waiting for that though we'll click on the nav lights logo lights passenger down to auto or on whichever works best for you emergency lights can come on and then we can also get some lighting in the cockpit if it's dark so we can go with overhead lighting here we can also go down to the very bottom by the parking brake and turn on integ integral lights and flood lights, whichever you like. Now you can see the APU says avail. So all we need to do is go to the APU gen, click it down, the on position, and that's gonna give us APU power. While we're up here, we can also turn on the AC slash DC utility. That's actually gonna power on the uh, screens back in the cabin for the flight attendant. So we click on that. And then we'll move over to the bleed air section on the right side of the overhead and click on 10th stage APU LCV and the ISO, or the isolation. It should both stay open. And we can turn the packs on here in the middle on air conditioning. Pack left, pack right. All right, now the APU is fully on. We have air going to the aircraft. We can go ahead and get fueled up. So we're not going to use like the, you know, the FBO fueler. We're just going to do everything kind of manually here. So if you go to the top of your uh, menu, go to Challenger 650, hover down, go to Ground Services, Refuel, Refuel Truck. And this is where you can fuel the truck up, fuel it up yourself. Uh, you can go outside and do this. It's up to you however you would like to do this. But uh, I'm just going to show you guys kind of the manual way. Uh, if we look here at our uh, MFD screen down here where it says total, it says 5,850 pounds. For my flight from New Orleans to Teterboro, we need uh, about, I believe it's 8,644 pounds. I'm kind of going to, you know, round up and I'm not going to really calculate, but you're going to have to have to calculate how many pounds you need right uh, as well as here in the fuel truck you see it's actually in gallons so it doesn't match up so you're gonna have to first off calculate how much total fuel do you need and then when you use a fuel truck you're not actually putting how much total you have you're actually entering how much you want to add to what you already have so just for the sake of this video we are going to add like a thousand pounds you could just hit start here and I can, that'll fuel it up and that'll keep going until you hit finish or you can go to preset over here and then hit the up arrow until you get to whatever your desired number is. So for us again, about a thousand or so, that works. And for this to even work, we need to go to another panel back here in the back of the cockpit on the right side. Over here above the circuit breakers, you can find this fuel panel. And the only way that the fuel truck will actually pump fuel into your aircraft is if this panel is on. So you need to go to the left here, hit on fuel. And then you need to also open up the tanks that you want to actually receive fuel. So usually it'll be the left main and the right main tanks and the engines. You could also pump it in the auxiliary pump in the in the front and the tail. Uh, this is show you the actual number. So these are all in pounds. But again, over here on the right, it's in gallons. So do not get that confused. We're gonna go with the left and right main tanks. So I'm gonna click that up, click that up, and then we'll hit start here on the fuel truck. You'll see now it starts to fuel up there. Oh, there it is and it's gonna keep going until it gets to a thousand gallons uh, and then it will stop so I'm gonna go ahead and close that out and we can continue with our aircraft setup while that goes now that's automatically automatically gonna stop for us again if you were to go in there and just hit you know start it will just keep going until basically you're full all right while we're waiting for fuel let's go into our FMS and if you don't want to see the FMS part feel free to skip forward uh, we will continue to do the quick start uh, but I do want to show for those people who need to know how to do that so let's go into index first we'll go to status then we need to go to secondary database click on the button next to that that should input there and then click on the button next to active database and that will paste it into that position it takes a couple seconds and then we'll go down to the secondary database and do the exact same thing again and that's basically just going to cycle it to make sure that you have no flight plan loaded if you want to get rid of these messages on the bottom just click message click it twice there we go all right now we're going to go to position initialization our airport is Kilo Mike Sierra Yankee. Uh, go to the next page. 
and we're going to grab the GNS or the FMS position previous page brings back to our original page and then drop it into set position so click the right right arrow or right button next to that and that will paste it in there now we'll go to flight plan on the right and we actually want to do is drag in our flight plan from SimBrief. It's much faster. So what I'm going to do is go to index. Instead, I will go to the right side of this page, which is route menu. Click on the button next to that and then flight plan or recall. Now for this to work, you actually need to make sure your SimBrief is linked with this aircraft. So to do that, you need to go to Challenger 650, go to the user settings, and then on the user interface page, the first page, actually sorry, the networking page on the second page, you'll find your SimBrief pilot ID on the very bottom. You need to put in your ID. I'll show you how to do that over in SimBrief. All right, to find your SimBrief pilot ID, you need to go to your SimBrief account, go to dispatch, then account settings, and then SimBrief data. And then there it is, your pilot ID in the second world. Also, you can only input this when the power is off so the aircraft has to be powered down for this to work but once you get that to get that set up let's go back to our plane go to flight planner recall that's the third button click on that and it will put in our departure and arrival airports that we generated our ofp on in simbrief so kmsy again you have to make sure you generate your ofp in simbrief for this to actually work so kilo tango echo bravo drop that into destination that's done now we go to the right side and click send there it is dl flight plan loaded data link flight plan loaded and it actually loads it to your secondary flight plan not your primary but your secondary so now click on secondary flight plan you see now everything has loaded in you can go to the next page and kind of see all my waypoints in there you want to make sure you activate it so activate it there and then hit execute uh, it brings in everything except for your departure and arrival so now we need to go to depth arrival click on that button there and we have runway two we don't have a departure out of new orleans but we do have an arrival in the teterboro so we do runway two for our departure just straight out vectors uh we execute on that and we'll go back to dip r index right here and then now we're going to click next to teterboro and over to arrival and now we're going to be doing the lvz4 via jhw transition there we go that's our star and our transition on the right side we are expecting a very awkward runway of runway uh, i believe it's 24 yeah 24 i don't know why it's in brief gave me that but that's what they gave me two four i'm just gonna go with it execute that now when we go over to our legs page we can actually review all of that and we do have a discontinuity here so we'll go ahead and go to jhw and replace the other jhw put that together and just kind of go through it make sure you got it all right all right, once I'm done with my flight plan, I'm going to go back up to the Challenger 650 uh, ground services menu. Back to refuel, refuel truck. And you can see it actually stopped because we are actually full of fuel now. So we can actually hit finish and that little gas sign goes away and we are full. Like We have probably more than enough fuel than we need. Uh, so we can close that out. We can also go back to our panel back here, close these and turn it off. We'll stop ref uh, you know, receiving fuel. Not that we can. And we can look here on our main screen here and see that we have 11,200 pounds which is a full tank has way more fuel than we need uh way too much fuel for this flight but anyways this is just an example so there it is that's how much fuel we have we can go down to our fms i'll just do it this way now and we now need to go to our perf so click on perf right here in the middle go to perf menu and we'll go over to the perf init and now let's just say we have about three passengers on board with us and they're carrying about 300 pounds of camera equipment or something like that uh and then here it says calc fuel we'll just put what we have here which is a freaking crazy total of 11,250 so i'm gonna put one one two five zero you can also use your keyboard by clicking the keyboard icon up here so calc fuel Cruise altitude is 45,000 feet so you could also put in f or fl 450 um, it accepts all those and execute that and that's all good to go we go over the takeoff and now it has our runway here all the information you can do dry wet whatever uh, and the winds uh, here in New Orleans currently 010 zero, zero at 19 it's pretty gusty out here actually and the outside temperature is 12 degrees Celsius and our QNH is 30 decimal for six make sure if you're doing it uh like that you need to put the decimal there all right then we just hit the next key 
and you can see we have our trims and our V speeds. So we just hit to send. Uh, there is a way to do the CG. I have not found out how to do that yet. Uh, I just skip it. I've I've not had an issue since. So we hit send here. But now we have our V speeds here: V1, VR, V2, and VT. And that's it. Once you have your takeoff data, you're basically ready to go. Um, again, to get rid of these messages down here, you can click on message and get rid of that. All right, let's continue the startup. So we need to make sure that our anti-skids are on, which is down here. Make sure it's on the arms position. Go back up top. We need our hydraulic pumps. We'll start with 3A and then 1B, 3B, 2B. You can set your landing altitude at the top right over here. Uh, we'll just leave it at zero because we're basically landing at sea level. Anti-ice is just underneath down here if you need anti-ice. Go ahead and move down to our glare shield here on the autopilot. We'll just kind of pre-select some of this stuff. I'll put mine at 10,000 feet for my initial climb out of New Orleans. And then over here, my speed. My speed will be about, I don't know, we'll just set 250 knots just for the heck of it. Back down to the bottom, make sure your ground spoilers here are set to auto and not disarm, not arm, but auto. Those reversals need to be armed in the up position. And then we'll go down to our trim. We'll do stab trim, one, two, mock trim, and yaw damper one and two. Mock trim lights should go out. All right, and we just need one more thing to do before we start the engines up. We'll walk back here and we'll shut the door. I'll show you guys the correct way to close the door. So you click on it till you see the hand symbol, drag it up. And keep dragging up, keep holding it. You can use your right mouse button to move the to move your camera while doing that. And then let go of both keys or both uh, mouse clicks. And this red lever on the right, we're gonna move that down. And then we'll zoom in, hit this uh, red one here that locks it in, cover it with the white thing. And then we'll open this little door if you need. You don't have to do this part if you don't want to. And we'll put the curtain there. All right, back up front. We are ready to start the engines. All right, so let's make sure the parking brake is set. The correct way to set the parking brake is to actually hold your tow brakes down. You'll see these tow brakes here in the front that I'm holding. Now, hold your tow brakes down. If you don't have tow brakes or a rudder pedal, uh, you need to map it to something. So hold your tow brake down, go back here, and pull the brake up, and then you will properly set your parking brakes. Now, hover your mouse to the left side of your screen where the handle signals are, and hit chocks out. They will take the chocks out once you get the thumbs up then you are good to go. The chocks will be removed. All right, there's a thumbs up. Let's go do a double check of the fuel. Make sure we're good there. We'll go up and now and uh, turn on our beacon light. Beacon light is on. Continue on the overhead. Do our fuel boost pumps left, fuel boost pump right, and we'll do ignition. Uh, we'll start with ignition B. Doesn't actually matter which one you use. I like to use B because, you know, blue. <laughs> but uh, then we'll get the engine started with the right side first engine two click on the start switch hold it for two seconds see the light illuminate let go look down here at your mfd wait for 20 percent 20 percent in two then you can go down here to your throttle on the right side and click on the red one drag it up white idle that should start spooling up All right, that's gonna stabilize somewhere around 63 and two or so. We can now go back up top again, do the exact same thing for the left engine. Left engine, starter hold, one, two, three, light illuminates. You can see we do have movement now on the N2. Once it's 20%, we're gonna introduce fuel by clicking the red button again, moving it up, flight idle, fuel on, N2 still rising, ITT shooting up, and starting the left engine. All right, once both engines are on, we'll move up top and turn on both the gens. So gen one down to on, gen two down to on. We can also uh, disarm the ignition B right there. We'll move over and turn on the 14th stage open. So left and right from closed to open on the 14th stage bleed air on the right side. And then we'll go and hit the window heat since we're over here and the probes. Anti-ice if you need it, again, it's right below there. And you can set your trim. I have a switch on my yoke for this, but you can use your trim and uh, move it up or down. I usually set mine to 3.0 for takeoff. And then down here, we'll turn on the nose steer. This is for your nose wheel steering. We can click on the FMS, go to tune on the left side, and then click on where it says standby. That's gonna switch to TAR for your transponder. Squawking Charlie. 
Also, your radio is here. We can click on that and go 122.8, which is already selected. But we could drop that here in COM 1 for you to come. All right, and we're ready to taxi. So we'll turn on the taxi lights. Go down. We'll set our flaps to 20 degrees. Make sure our altimeter is set, which needs to be 3046. Your barrel is right here above your main PFD screen. So 3046. There we go. Hide that. We'll go down here. We'll hold our tow brakes again while we release the parking brake so we don't roll off. You don't actually need power to get rolling. It has enough idle power, idle thrust to get you going. So now we're rolling. We'll taxi over to runway 2 and then we'll do our takeoff. short of runway two before we take off we do a couple things and that is anti-collision lights to on our ignition to continuous and our landing lights on you can actually click uh, in between any of the switches on the landing lights to turn them all on at the same time there we go all right you're ready to go flaps are down we're set let's line up on runway I'm gonna hold the tow brakes there and I'm actually gonna hit flight director nav mode so we can have that ready and then we'll hit ATS here which is our auto throttle system and that will actually spool up our throttles automatically to take off power and chrono on park brake released airspeed alive power set to you guys have a great flight remember you have three choices give up give in give it all you got peace love and god bless you i'll see you guys next time next video i'm out